Tally ho everybody, this is A Heap of Games, Adam speaking, and I'm here to do the robot building tutorial so that you can enter Ro uh, Banter Wars Series 3. Now, the first thing you need to do is go to Game Tech Mods. By the way, if you're interested in the rules for entry, that's a separate video. I'll leave a link in the description, so if you know how to make a robot and you just want to know the rules, then that is in the uh, rules video, which has rules such as these ones here. Now, if you want to build a robot, if you're new to it, this is what you do. First, you go to Game Tech Mods, which is this site here. You've got the address up here. I'll link, I'll link it in the description as well. And once you're on this page, you go to Downloads. Once in Downloads, you want to go to Working Game. And the one I use from here, there's a couple of options you can download, but the one I'll be using for mine, once my internet decides to load the page, is Robot Arena 2 version 1.4 full version. So you have to click on that, and it should, in due time, I'm sure your internet's faster than mine, it should come up with this, and you simply download it. If you do experience any problems, I'm sure the people on Game Tech Mods will help you out. They're a good bunch of people, they know what they're doing most of the time. Because I'm on there, I don't know what I'm doing, so not everyone on there knows what they're doing. And once you have that, then all you have to really do from there is go to your version of the game. I mean, I've got loads here because I've had to do loads of different stuff. But it should come up. It will look like this. Now, usually um, it doesn't come up with a, a, home pe a desktop link. So you go into this file here, which should start off as Robot Wars 2 version 1.4. I'm going to get my bloody phone away from the microphone because it's making bloody noise, isn't it? Amateur mistake. Right, so let's crack on. I'm going to go on this one because I've got spaces to make things. But you come up with this. So you've got all the AI, arenas, blah, 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 blah. Or you should do anyway. And further down, you have this, robotarena2.exe. Now, I'm going to reset my filming so we can go, and go ahead and make a robot. So you end up with a screen like this. This is the homepage for Robot Arena 2. Now I must warn you before we get started that the game is a little unstable, so I recommend running it with no other programs running at the same time, because sometimes it will crash, and when you're building a robot, that's a nightmare. So, in order to start your robot, it's a quick and easy process. You go into Team HQ, I've got all my teams here, but I'll build one in here, I think. Um, I've got copies of these everywhere, so it doesn't matter if I um, take one out. I want one, I just, just in case, I want to take one out that hasn't been had taken loads of time editing. So we'll scrap this one. Oh, what am I doing? Scrap bot down here. So you'll have these spaces here. So you click on that, and this is the screen you come up with. Overview, chassis. All you can really do at this stage is chassis. Structure design. Now this is where you design the shape of your robot. So I'm going to design one here. I might design the new Sumo House Robot that will hopefully appear in Series 3. So that's the basic shape. Then what you do, you also, by the way, you can um, do a simple circle using that or a rectangle, um, a less manual way to do it. Go down here, step 1, step 2, click on step 2, and you get this bit here. Now what you do to change the shape at the top of your robot is to click on these again, and you can drag them, and you can see that it changes the shape of your robot. So I'm going to make it look a bit like this. So it's all very simple. Sometimes it could be a bit um, irritating, but you get the hang of it quite quickly. I'm going to make it quite low to the ground. So it looks a bit like that now. That looks like a pretty solid shape. And then just click on Finished. And there's your basic body shape. It looks a bit dull at the moment. No weapons, no power. It's just a box. You can change the armor. So... I'd like to put some titanium on it. Lovely job. Components, that's where you put things like drives and weapons in. So you've got power, extenders, mechanics, uh, wheels, weapons, extras. First thing I usually put in is the mechanics, things like wheels. So if I put a ZTEC motor, you get little drop downs here as well, so, some, so you can get like high power one. But they do add to the weight, and the more weight you have, the harder it is to move. So I'm going to put standard ZTEC motors in here. So you click on attach, bring it over here. Now this is the part I struggled with at first. In order to turn the motor or any component, hold down shift on your keyboard and then move your mouse around. 
and it turns it. So if I put that there now, remember to leave room for wheels and put another one in, hold shift and do that. Brilliant stuff. There we go. So we've got those in. We can go to the wheel section and pick a wheel. Now that's a bit big for my robot, I think. Maybe go a bit smaller. Maybe something like the shiny hub wheel. That looks fine. I don't want it to be sticking out the chassis because the wheel can sometimes um, stick out the chassis. It looks a bit messy. But it's up to you if you want something sticking out the side. You can always use decals to clean it up a bit. But there we go. That's our two wheels in. Now, do I want to add more? I don't think so. I think I'm going to have a robot with just the two-wheel drive, but also very powerful. I can also put a caster on the back. This isn't necessary. Um, not really necessary at all, but... I don't know. I like it. It's fun. Then again, that caster looks a bit lower than those wheels, so it might cause problems with drive. So, screw that. That's going. So you click on the object, and click on Remove. There we go. And that's that gone. Now, the next thing I want is power. So every robot needs this, the robot control board. So attach that. Quite small, so you can put it wherever. I'll put it at the back here where it's out of the way. Now, the robot wants a weapon. So go into mechanics again. So these are your um, your wheel ones, like the Z-Tech, uh, angle motor, spin motor. And then after that, you get the weapon motors. So burst motors and more burst motors and servos. So like the, the burst pistons are for like spikes and stuff like that. Uh, if you, I'm not going to go through everything here because I want to keep the video relatively short. But there will be tutorials out there and people out there to help you do all this stuff. But for now, I'm going to put the burst motor in. We're going to make a scoop flipper. So another thing. If you want it to be raised higher inside the body. Oh, by the way, you can zoom in a bit if you have one of those rotating wheel things on your mouse. Little wheel thing. I don't know what it's called. But you can rotate. If you hold control rather than shift and move your mouse, it moves the component up and down. So that can be quite useful. Left, uh, right click to move the robot around like this. That can be quite useful. So I want to move this up probably about there. Maybe a bit higher. There we go. That'll do lovely. And I want to plant it sort of in the middle. There we go. Click on it. Sometimes it screws up, so I might have to go to a different page and click on it again to bring up this bit here. So range of start motion. I'll put it there for now, so it's facing that way. And then we'll get an extender. Probably get a square extender, and you can have a drop down to change the size of it. Attach, and if you hover over, you don't have to actually attach it, but it hovers over, shows you how exactly it looks. Now I'm going to put an 80 centimeter one on it. Like that. That looks lovely. And I think on the end of that I shall put a big juicy scoop. Mm, yeah, I'll put the blue one on. And then it's upside down here. That's no good. So if I hold shift and move the mouse, it turns it around. So that means I've now got a scoop at the front. I can lower it with the range of start motion uh, thingamajigger. And then with the range of motion end, you can change where it uh, lifts up to. So about there will be lovely. And now with all that done, it's time to put a few batteries in so the robot actually moves. So these are your batteries. You've got the nifty, the small battery, and then the big one, the super volt, 12 volt. So I'm going to put one of them in. I'm going to turn it around in here so it will fit there. Put another one in for good measure. Although I might have to do that. Just improvise a bit so they will fit in. So now it's going to be powerful. It's got a nice scoop at the front. And that should be a pretty good sumo robot. Powerful. Not too effective in terms of weaponry. But it will certainly do the job. Next up is the hard part. Now it's not actually very hard at all. Go to the wiring. And you have these little buttons up here. And this big uh, control box in the middle. So how I always do it, I always put this in, the, uh, this in, the analog, control name, forward. Now this is pretty essential for me, because when you send me the robots and I need to program it, I need the first one that uh, has a positive axis up, 
and the negative axis down, that one needs to be called forward. And then for the second one, left, right. Left and right with capitals, no space between. Positive axis, left, negative axis, right. Now, so you've got those two. We'll put the uh, flipper in as well, so that's button. And that needs to be either flip, or if it's a flipper, uh, no, either fire, if it's like an axe or a spike or something, or... No, I think it is just fire. Let's just put fire for now. Let's just do that. If there are any errors with your robot, I'll, I'll make corrections um, when I've got it. And then the button, choose whatever you want, but I usually go for spacebar. Nice and easy. And then what you do, we'll start with the weapon first. You click on the motor, and it com comes up with this, and then just select fire. So now, when we press spacebar, flip, up we go. And the weapon operates. Lovely. Now, if you have like a circular saw or just any spinning object, you use switch. And what you do there, instead of fire, you put spin in the control name box. Pretty simple, that's all you need to do. And it will come up with a spin anti-clockwise or clockwise thing. Um, you have to figure out which way it's best for your weapon to spin. Right, now this is the more difficult part. So if we look at our robot from up down, uh, from, from bird's eye view with the robot facing forward, and we click on the forward control, and then we click on the left hand motor. It will come up with this. For the left hand motors, positive axis needs to be spin counterclockwise. And the negative axis needs to be spin clockwise. Now this applies to any wheel on the left hand side on the forward control. So if I had four wheels, I'd do that for the other left hand side wheel as well. For the right hand side, positive axis is spin clockwise and negative axis is spin counterclockwise. So it's the opposite. The left right button is a bit easier because all the wheels are then just spin clockwise positive and spin counterclockwise negative. Like so. Now at this stage I'm going to go back to HQ. I warned you earlier that the game does crash on occasion. So if you get to that stage and then your game crashes you're screwed you have to start over. So if you go back to HQ it automatically saves and if your game crashes it's at that stage you just exit it out. So we're going to go back in now and just carry on. Now our robot's saved, it's not going to disappear. So that's our robot at the moment. Let's take it to the test zone, test robot. And you come into this bit. And you turn it, use the weapon. Looks like a beast! Looks absolutely amazing. And that'll do great as a house robot for my sumo. You can also change the paint. I might actually leave that paint job nice and shiny. But you have colour fills, you have texture fills, so you get like... Um, yeah, like a aluminium brush effects, lava effects. Just have a look around. Decals are fun as well, so I'm going to make my my uh, flipper look more realistic by getting a, a horizontal, no, vertical slot, black slot. Use control to make it smaller or bigger. And obviously use shift to turn it around. But I'm going to put that there. And then one here. So it looks a bit more realistic now. Let's put a little bit more in there. There you go. So that looks nifty. And you can also put them on the wheels. Just to make that robot look a little bit more realistic. A bit more lovely. And I might put a little red X maybe. On the back here. Because why not? Because that's, that's what you'll see when you're doomed. And then that's, that's how a robot looks. It looks fine to me. And we're going to call it. You go back to the overview and call it Fat Knacker. You can call your robot whatever you want as long as you tell me. Then, if your robot was built um, facing sideways, you'll know because if you hover over forward heading, this thing here, you'll have a green line and that's where it faces forward. So mine's facing forward at the moment, so I don't need to change that at all. But it's useful for me um, and yourself if you have it facing the right way. So if your robot was facing the other direction, like over this way, you'd have it there. Uh, there we go. But mine doesn't, so that's lovely. Now, if you want to take a picture, that's lovely. I'm going to take a picture right now, snapshot, and you get a nice little picture there. Alright, what else do we need to cover? We've got our robot, it looks lovely. Now the next step is to export it. So if you go back to HQ, there's our robot there, and you'll notice a little button down here saying export bot. 
It will say exported robot designs will be saved in the robot designs folder in your game directory. So, let's have a look at that. We'll export it as Fat Knacker. So just press OK. Quit the game. There's a lovely shot of Audacity for you. And then if we're back in the folder, Robot Arena 2 version 1.4 copy, go up to Robot Designs, and there is Fat Knacker. And that should be OK to send to me, and I can import it into the game. And then you're away. All you need to do is your intro. So, I hope you have learned a lot from this tutorial. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask. It's quite simple, and just make sure you save your robot on occasion before the game crashes, because it does happen regularly. I'm lucky it didn't happen in this tutorial here. But thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy Bantle Series 2 as it goes on right now. And I hope you enter for Series 3 and will have a jolly good blast. Remember to go watch the, the rules video before you make your robot, though, because there are some rules you need to know about. This has been A Heap of Games, Adam speaking. Tra, Toodle Pip Toodle, and Cheerio. Have fun creating.